Here we're going to talk about Markov, Markovnikov's rule. All right, Markovnikov's rule comes into play when uh, one has uh, addition reactions. Uh, example we talked about in class is if you have like a double bond here and you have two things here like HI, uh, the H will go to one side of the double bond and the I will go to the other side and here we have CH3, CH2I. Now what would happen if that uh, instead of one carbon having two hydrogens and the other carbon having two hydrogens, suppose that uh, one carbon had uh, one hydrogen and the other carbon had two hydrogens. Where would the H and where would the I go? Well, well Markovnikov's rule says that the H will go to the carbon that already has the greatest number of hydrogen atoms. Well, for example, this is we did in class. Here we have a, um, th this HI is going to add to this double bond here. The H can go to this carbon or it can go to this carbon. Where is the H going to go? Well, the H is going to go to the carbon that has already uh, two hydrogens rather than one. So the H is going to go here and the I is going to go there, as we said in class, and we did a clicker question on this. Um, and so therefore the product is the H goes to the end here, where there's two H's, and then the I, the iodide, or goes to where there's only one hydrogen right there. Now what we want to do is to try to uh, understand this uh, based upon an electrophilic addition reaction mechanism. Why does the hydrogen go to the carbon that has the most hydrogens? Well, let's um, look at this um, particular example. And actually, we don't need a one here because propene is already only one way to write propene. Um, let's add HCl to propene and uh, try to figure out why the H goes to the carbon that has the most uh, H's. All right, let's write propene here. I'll write the structural formula double bond C and then we have an H here we have an H here we have one H only one H there and here we have three H's all right Markov, um, <laughs> Markovnikov's rule says that uh, the H is going to go here let's make this even more general and write it as this C um, H now let me uh, write it more structurally like this. We'll have an H here. And down here we'll have an R group where R is not equal to H. And recall that the symbol R is used by organic chemist to denote some sort of group. And here we're saying it could be anything. For the case of propene, the R group will be the CH3. That's CH3, that's the methyl group. And then we have that hydrogen there. Now we have a double bond and we're going to go C, H, H. And let's contrast, I'll redraw the structure over here. <clears throat> Not very good at drawing these structures. We'll put an R group here. Now let's do a um, electrophilic addition here. Uh, what we're going to add to this is H and I, or HCl, I guess that was the example. This has a partial negative charge and this has a partial positive charge because chlorine is more electronegative and it will draw electron density toward it, leaving a partial positive charge on hydrogen. All right, this partial positive charge, uh, that is, um, will it add first to the double bond. So this is the positive charge. Where uh, here do you have electrons? Uh, well, looks like that double bond, uh, electron-rich part of the molecule. So this hydrogen is going to say, oh, I need some electrons to make me, my, make me happy because I have a partial positive charge and I don't want really a charge. So it's going to add to this. Now you can put the hydrogen here and make a bond or put the hydrogen here and make a bond. Let's bring in the hydrogen here, H+. Plus and um, let's first of all put it on the left here so these electrons will go up this way let's on this side add the H plus and put it over here so these electrons will go up there well when you add that uh, H plus that electrophilic addition 
the resulting uh, structure well have a hydrogen here a hydrogen here and that R group there have a single bond here now both those electron pairs went up there so this will give this as a positive charge and there is the uh, negative uh, chloride you popped off a hydrogen proton H plus put it on there leaving chloride negative and that chloride then will uh, go there on this side what we had was okay let's put the hydrogen on the other side C H this is that R group and now remember we popped off a pair of electrons put it over there if you look at the formal charge of carbon it has plus one Ooh, formal charge that's chem 107 concept and now we'll have here a uh, C and now this H is formed here H is formed here H is formed here now we're going to ask the question which cation is more stable the one with the carbon here with the positive charge or the one with a positive charge on this carbon well if you think about it those H's generally you associate H's with positive charges and so oh a positive positive charge this would probably not be as stable as something over here if this R group can somehow stabilize that positive charge inject some electron density in there make this less of a positive charge make it less than a positive charge then this will be more stable so in fact this is the more stable cation because when you put the hydrogen on the carbon that has more hydrogens you form this cation and this cation is more stable for the carbon that has fewer hydrogens then now when you add the I, uh, Cl minus that'll go right there you have uh, this compound here so that's uh, Makarnikov's rule explained in terms of stability of the cation where is that positive charge going to go if you put it on the carbon that has fewer hydrogens it's more stable because this R group is assumed to be uh, electron injecting or at least somehow put some electrons in there make that positive charge a little less um, uh, unstable or a little more stable so there you have it Makarov Makovnikov's rule